video we're going to talk about rifle mounted lights. Now this is a little bit of a different subject from uh, pistol mounted lights, however if you have a rifle mounted light or shotgun mounted light then I would recommend that you also have a pistol mounted light. Keep it consistent and you know the principles are basically going to be the same but here's my thought on this. <clears throat> if you're going to be using a rifle uh, you know for home defense or whatever the principle still applies uh, to the tactical environment. Techniques and stuff like that will be basically consistent because you're engaging with a rifle, just like you'd be engaging with a pistol, and, you know, whatever. So, there's, uh, there's things that you might want to look for in your, in your lights, and we'll go over that in a gear video. But some considerations for this, I would not try to rely on a handheld light. Um, that's why I would push more for a weapon mount of light. It makes things a little bit easier. And you can actually uh, manage having a bigger light. And it, it's not really that costly. It cost me less than a hundred bucks to get a, this nice, uh, this nice Phoenix uh, PD35, which I will do a review in the future on. Uh, and talk about my experiences when I spend more time doing low light because here in Alaska it's a great opportunity right now for some of the local trainers to actually cover these subjects. So I intend to go through these things and practice and kind of find my own little uh, way of operating things and things that I've, I've learned and examples of why you want to search out training and practice can, uh, and try to get good with different positions and stuff like that. So a weapon mounted light is uh, in itself going to make things uh, somewhat easier and open up your versatility. However, there are some drawbacks such as administrative uh, searching with a light and stuff like that. So, and, <clears throat> but basically if you're having it on a rifle, you're not carrying a rifle around town unless you're like one of those open carriers uh, from the gun brush and uh, the uh, political statements that people were making. But if you have to engage at night, you want positive identification, and there are certain gear considerations in that. You don't want a little tiny pistol-mounted light, uh, but some people can use them, you know, uh, uh, to great effect or whatever, and they'll typically hold up uh, just as well as some that are designed for rifles. So, um, as you can see here on my Styrog, I'm using a Magpul attachment here, and I uh, am mounting it on the side of the fixed, the... Uh, fixed <laughs> the uh, basically the uh, fixed sight and then I have it drooping down and I have it basically out of the way from any heat source from the rifle and it's good enough offset and I just basically duct tape the the base velcro <clears throat> here and as it wears I'm gonna actually uh, probably need to find a way like replace the velcro with something I can find at the store and do a two-way take off the glued on uh, velcro to get a better secure hold or just like try to zip tie it or whatever but basically when I go to uh, uh, disassemble this rifle you know uh, locking back the uh, the barrel or the the action and then taking off the barrel you'll notice that um, well gotta have it back gotta have the charging handle back but the cord is still attached so uh, depending on your rifle you might want to adjust your setup accordingly um, a lot of times on ARs, uh, you're typically going to be attached to a handguard, and that's the case with the Styrog, but because the barrel and the handguard are basically the same and you can take them off for cleaning and such, um, it can make it a little bit more inconvenient and you can't really permanently affix it like you could uh, with an AR or some other uh, weapons. However, that doesn't mean that I can't do that uh, for this. I, I can actually... Uh, just take off the whole receiver here and be able to clean that way. It's not necessary to always take off your barrel. And even so, you can still have it attached. You know, whatever. These are just small considerations here uh, for setup and stuff like that. But for weapon mounted lights, the principles of utilizing it are going to be the same as a pistol, but you're going to be more of an, an aggressor role. Kind of like with a home defense uh, pistol. If you, have if you have laws, like stand your ground laws or something like that, you don't have to put up with much stuff. But that doesn't mean unnecessarily using force. You still are accountable for your shots and stuff like that. Uh, you can't go full ninja uh, a lot of the times because if you don't have you know positive identification, it's going to be kind of hard to uh, deal with that in court. Uh, and also, you know, if you know you're trying to be a, a, a ninja and they find out and they immediately surrender, then that's a, a you're kind of obligated to limit your force to basically that. 
uh, if you can. Even with standard ground laws, it doesn't really justify that. Like the current uh, thing that's going on in Florida where that guy was pushed down and he uh, used a pistol to defend himself. The standard ground laws there is, aren't helping him out <clears throat> because he wasn't under threat anymore. And there's these little things here and there, like if you're going to be using a rifle for defense. Now in tactical situations, that's a little bit different. The utilization is slightly different, but uh, it's basically the same. And the big thing is having to set up, having the right equipment uh, for that. So these are just little considerations. It's not as muddy as a pistol mounted light or even a handheld light. And there are ways to uh, use a handheld light uh, because... You know, the whole principle is having light, having positive identification, but it's a lot easier to have a weapon mount of light, and it's probably the best way to go. I would not want to have to use a handheld light uh, if I could get away with it on any rifle, but, you know, in general, they can be a good advantage if you set things up properly, use Loctite and stuff like that. When I was in a training course, just a little tidbit of my experience, this was actually loosening up, so I had to actually crank it down a good amount, and I'm going to have to lock tight it uh, to keep it all, you know, in place. Not the attachment to this rail, because I need to be able to take that off uh, now and then probably in order to effectively, like, uh, replace the batteries or whatever. <clears throat> but um, other than that, I there there's not really that much to know about needing to have a, a weapon mounted light on your rifle or rifle mounted light however you want to say it but you need to just like with a pistol you need to seek out training get some experience behind it and not just throw it on and think you're good but you know with all that said i appreciate you guys watching the video you know leave your comments below and this might have been a little dry and stuff you already uh, understood or whatever but i felt obligated to kind of cover that since I covered everything else that has to do with low light uh, gear. So anyways, uh, thanks a lot for watching. Leave your comments below, share the video, uh, help me uh, grow since this is my new channel since the other one got deleted. Um, so uh, you guys have a good one and I'll see you in the next video.